playing with the controls on the camera again. Hey, I'm easily amused. Um, I get uh, comments and uh, YouTube mails and, and different things with all kinds of questions in them. And it's amazing how many times those questions touch on the concept of time, as in, how long until this? How long will it take for that? And uh, it's a very reasonable question mm, to the mind. But the mind is out of its league when we're operating from heart. So maybe we just look at it and give it a nice pat on the head and go on about our business. How long is meaningless? The one thing I'd suggest we all accept is that every idea we have around time is inaccurate. And the thing is, our ideas create, beliefs create, thoughts create. And so why mess around with things that are so much less than what is? Truth, I mean, just look at life. Anything you ever thought it was going to be, chances are it turned out to be something else. Look at awakening. Any ideas we had around awakening? I mean, I don't know anybody who had it pegged and woke up and that's just how it was. It, it just, nothing, but nothing is what it appears to be, what it seems to be, what we think it is. And the sooner we get over uh, the mental arrogance that comes with believing any kind of thought, the better. There's a, an emptiness, an openness that will immediately fill in once we give it the chance. But as long as we're going to be occupied in uh, the mind's busy bodying, hamster wheeling activity, you know, uh, that's how we're using our free will. That's the choice we're making, and we get to choose. Uh, funny how that works, huh? So, anything you notice crop up within you that has to do with time, look away. It's not relevant to anything really deep. Uh, as a, for instance, we're already ascended, we're already in all the different planes and dimensions. We exist there, right now. There's nothing to wait for. I can't explain this at all. I just know it's true from the visiting that I've done here and there so far. Um, my strongest abilities are sensing and hearing. Believe it or not, vision lags behind for me on the inner plane as far as actually seeing something. Uh, but if I can hear, that works for me at this point. I mean, I'm not, I'm not complaining about what is anymore. What is is just fine with me. As a matter of fact, I would just like to find out what is, huh? And I have discovered at least for myself, the way to do that is to empty out. Just to be still. We've got the, the very wonder of heaven right inside. But it's not going to come out and attack us and, and abduct us and drag us in, huh? There's a tremendous respect for our free will. Now it's time that we learn to respect our free will and to use it to let heart be in charge of how it's used. I don't know if free will disappears at some point. I really don't. I know it's very key 
right now, you'll notice a lot of times the powers that were and the negative ETs and, and if those are different, I don't know, trying to convince us to decide in ways that they want us to decide and so they'll promise us one thing and get us to agree and then give us another. But it was our agreement where we shot ourselves in the foot. So, you know, yeah, this, this is an appropriate one to share with you. This isn't exactly a first, but it's really rare that I didn't log the time that I started journaling. So the time is unknown. Finished at 1.16 a.m. It was from January 3rd, uh, the first one of that day. The Mayan day was four. Read. Four is uh, four square. It's a very fire, air, water, and earth. It's, it's a, a number of earth and stability. The tetrahedron, the four-sided figure, is, is phenomenal. And read is like a conduit for flow. So now, on this one, I have four links that, you know, pick two and watch them. I think you'll really get something out of it. Um, everything from four minutes to 20, ooh, actually to an hour and 36, and 20 and an hour and nine. So there's, there's plenty of viewing here if you would like to uh, check it out in the transcript. Here we go. YouTube keeps bugging me to use my real name interrupting what I'm doing and being insistent. Why would I want to do that? What do they care about my name? They want to be another Facebook where the CIA can come and, and troll? Why do they care? Can you not see what is likely lurking behind this move? It's Google, people. Surely we know they can't be trusted. They're already snooping to a huge degree. And now they want me to give them this? Hell no. Many of us are still to program to be able to see who gains the big advantage in such moves. Had you heard about how the CIA is admitting it was saving loads of cash by s cyber snooping our data on Facebook? I closed my account there almost immediately. Oh my God, so very blatant they are. They're quite convinced we're still asleep. I guess a lot of us are, but you know, we aren't. Now, I'm not saying anything about what choices you should be making. I'm not into the should stuff. I don't even like the word, nor into running anyone's life, but my own. You make your choices. I'm just saying, if you're one of the trusting ones, maybe wake the hell up. <laughs> Do some research. Don't just be naive. Now, this is why I don't have a Google Plus account, nor am I interested in all this linking up accounts people seem to be doing. Aside from making it easier to be hacked, that lets the old alphabet soup guys and gals have a field day without having to do much of any legwork on their own. People are just dishing themselves up for the powers that were. Now, please know before we go any farther that you cannot do anything wrong. I'm going to love and respect you no matter what your choices are. And that's what unconditional means. No strings, no requirements, no hoops. Well, I mean, beyond the fact that you just exist, that one's pretty easy. Okay, now, on to something else, maybe. We'll see what these fingers dish up. Remember, none of this comes from or through this mind. It's strictly from heart or center, and that means I 
don't know what's coming next. A cyber friend asked me, what's it like to be centered in now? What does that feel like? He wanted to know. Interesting question. This one cruises from heart a good part of the time, so I meet him there. Questions from ahead have no draw, no appeal for me anymore. I don't question that. It, it doesn't do any good. <laughs> Tried it lots. Nothing worthwhile ever came of it. Give it up for Lent, huh? I did. So I will restate for some who aren't quite there yet. So they have some challenges with some of this. That there's nothing at all wrong with mind. I don't want to lose mine or lock it up or anything. It's just that it no longer runs the show here as it does in all of the sheeple and sleeple most of the time. Hey, we all find heart sometimes. You know, it's far from rocket science and anyone can seem to stumble into heart at any time. It's such a strange place, though, when it's not what you were consciously looking for that most people get out about as quickly as they fell into it. Even so, just being in heart for one microsecond can and does have an effect on the life. The brain is not the great expansive instrument that so many seem to believe it is. Instead, it, it turns out to be more of a governor or a, a down throttle on what is allowed to come through, come into the conscious awareness from the infinity, it seems to perceive. Yeah, the brain limits us. Who to thunk it, huh? Not me. So, what does now feel like? Well, Eventually, one notices that there's no past and no future present. <laughs> Pardon the pun, no future here. In the present is not one scrap of what was or what is to be, only what now is. That means you find you have no expectations for anything when deeply in now. You just don't care. It's, it's no longer interesting. This is one sure sign of being within. When I say there's no past in the present, that one's a bit thicker. It means mind is in neutral gear when you're there. When you're truly present, you're just perceiving what is. You don't really know anything. Or if you'll take a look at all of your knowledge, simply all of it, you'll see how it comes strictly from the past. What I've noticed is that about 99% of mind's output is either future or past centered. And all is based on the past. That's where you picked up all of your knowledge, you know, in the past. When you're pondering the future or holding on to expectations of any kind, that's also strictly mind's work. It has no place in heart or in now. This is hard to talk about because you have to put it all together. You can't take one of these little paragraphs out of context because they have to go together. Uh, they don't stand well on their own. Now, that doesn't mean mind shuts down the second you go within. It will likely still come up with some thoughts. If you're savvy and know where you are, as in present, as in now, you'll realize that it's quite possible to separate out from those thoughts. Maybe that's why they're showing up, to give you the opportunity to recognize that you're not mind, that you can stand back. It's quite possible to watch thoughts float by just like clouds across the sky and not think them. Just observe. 
like seeing a link and not clicking on it, huh? Now, to some, maybe this is their first acquaintance with the possibility of not thinking a thought, yet still perceiving it. So, do take a moment with that. And please, don't be in such a hurry. Another sign of mind is that you're unwilling to take that pause, to take any pause. Push pause, that's what it's there for. And that way, you'll allow things to penetrate that much deeper inside, instead of being in the forced rush mode so characteristic of the mind. It's a great way to use your free will. You're voting for higher consciousness. A thought you don't think? Yep, just so. If this seems just too strange, that's a symptom of not just being in mind, but also of being identified with it, of thinking you are that. Do you see this? Your heart sees all of these things. So if you find that you don't, just drop down and center attention mid-chest. You'd be surprised how this can help. While I don't know, I do suspect that one must be at least somewhat disidentified from mind for this to make sense. Thoughts you don't think. Do remember how critical it is the way you define your I. Everything, simply everything flows from that. So if you're identified with mind, you're pretty well trapped. You know, when it wants to hamster wheel, you get to come along, like it or not. That sucks. If you're still identified with the avatar, body or mind or both, then you haven't yet fully taken your power back from all of that programming. That's all. No big deal. You can be over that in a minute. Well, once you make that choice, we can shift anytime we want. And don't look for bells and whistles and Fireworks, you know, that's that expectations crap. It gets in the way. It's empty. It's truly most helpful to have the sense that you're not present in 3D, not the real you. Let me put it another way. The real you is indeed present here, just not in the avatar. That's something you operate, more like a car. Only you're not in it, it's in you. Yeah, I know, it's a brain pretzel, that's okay. You're in the midst of retraining the mind. My suggestion, enjoy the heck out of it. Set the intent to always have fun no matter what. You can do that. You are that powerful. It's your free will that's involved, though, which is why no one can come along and give this sort of thing to you. That's your job, taking your power back. You may find it helpful to back out the whole way, just for a moment. Let's do that. Set your intent to be free of identifying only with 3D. Set your intent that you want to expand. Got it? Okay, now be centered mid-chest to hear the rest. There is ultimately no separation at all. It's a game that we play. It's not even real, just something for fun, for amusement, for experience. That means it's not so much that you are not the body-mind avatar. Rather, you are that, along with everyone else's avatars, and the trees, and the bees, and the cat, and the dog poop. <laughs> Need I go on? Are you getting it? Ultimately, there is simply nothing, no thing, that you are not. 
You are the whole show. You play every part with a different aspect of your being. Stick with heart now, leave mind out of it. Time to get used to sensing things instead of always going into mind to try to figure them out. Do that some other time. For now, just stay strictly within. It's a better ride, I assure you. Be brave. The implications, what flows from all of this, are just about endless. And that's fine, so are you. <laughs> just learn to ponder them from within the chest, not in the head. Heart produces neurotransmitters too, just like the brain. Did you know that? <laughs> so does the gut. Go figure. Yep, even the belly can think. Now, don't think about it. That's the big challenge, or so it now seems. But just stay in heart. You've spent likely more than 99% of your amgadiment locked in your head, even thinking you are that. Well, you're not. But. If you're unwilling to come out of there now and again, how will you ever discover it? You know what they say about doing it like you've always done it, then you'll continue to get what you've always gotten. Is that good enough? Go for it if that's what you want. Now, how about a little balance here, huh? Western man and woman is pretty much one-sided, so yang. The new earth, the, the new day dawning is very much yin or yin and yang balanced. No more of this overpowering of everything by thought and aggression. Thought and mind have actually all but consumed most of mankind. We've gotten lost in the left brain. Like it's a jailer. What a sight. <laughs> we're all crazy, but quite convinced we're the sane ones and argue for it loudly. It's so funny. It's ridiculous, but this isn't seen until we exit the head. Even if only for a moment now and then. We're in a funny state. We're the greatest things going. Massively powerful energy or spirit beings. Quite convinced that we're these little nothings. An accident of biology, a product of the apes. It's quite bizarre once you take another perspective on things. But for as long as we stay locked in left brain, we won't be seeing the ultimate humor in the whole thing. Mine really doesn't think it's very funny yet. I really do suggest we find our sense of humor and make friends with it. We've been old fuddy-duddies taking ourselves way too seriously. That's what mind-centric people tend to do. It's just built into how mind operates. Everything is seen with artificial importance stamped all over it. And we fall for it, if we're in mind. Well, that's easy to correct, you know. Come on, you take one vacation a year at least. It's way past time to take a vacation from mind. I suggest you take one every day, even if only for one minute at a go at first. Hey, don't knock it until you've given it a fair try. You can't know until you do so. So you'd only be talking from ignorance. That's mostly what the sheeple and sleep will do. We're not that. Let's see how far you can go. 
Much of what we call science today is really cultish religion. Things believed without being tested out. Things believed in religiously. I'm not one to get into line and verse and chapter on such things. Go seek it out for yourself. If your mind is open, you'll find it. Nassim Haramain has, has done a good job plowing through that territory. The open mind is just about a necessity to awakening, I think. But then again, there are no generalities, so you just can't make statements like that. So I'll say it, the open mind seems to me to be just about a necessity to awakening. Except for those who get a, a sudden kundalini rising or awakening, everyone else seems to require at least a partially open mind. Why? Well, maybe because our beliefs are what create our reality. This will be proven, and I hope science doesn't take until the next century to get it done. Until they're willing to put consciousness back on the table and in the lab, they're going nowhere fast. Things are created by consciousness, out of consciousness. It's not matter, but consciousness that is primary, my absolute favorite explication of this is by the wonderful Peter Russell in The Primacy of Consciousness, and I put that one as my first link. Even if you've seen and heard it before, it's worthy of watching again. You know, they talk about the Big Bang, and, and let's look at this. Can, what's being done there is an attempt to force our sense of time upon reality that goes way beyond 3D. And it's nuts just on the surface of it, but we don't think of that because we're all lost in mind and the scientists say it must have been this way and, and so on and so on. And so we believe. There are a lot of things believed with no firm foundation at all. A lot of things. You see, we do have some phenomenal, some wonderful scientists sufficiently open to be today's visionaries. Peter Russell, Nassim Haramain is another one, as is Greg Braden, Bruce Lipton, and so many others. The world is not totally programmed and grim. The light is shining through. And if you're not seeing it, then be sure to look to your own belief systems, your own internal BS. Weed the garden. The veil is truly thinning. I mean, it's getting seriously transparent. If you're not perceiving that, also look within for the reason and the fix. Fix. That's a mental idea. But anyway, we all have an internal garden of belief growing inside. Teresa, where were you when you were writing this, you know? It controls what we perceive, what we call reality. Would you believe it if I told you it's this garden that structures your whole reality? No? Okay. How about the whole outside world doesn't exist on its own? Are you open enough to entertain the possibility that the out there is nothing more than a reflection of the in there, of what you are, of what we are inside? Just slow down, okay? Don't allow self to get so stressed. Cut that stuff off at the pass simply by noticing it and saying no. We all have a certain amount of internal dissonance going on. Our head has been in charge, or it was in charge, for a very long time. And it's convinced that it knows some things. Then there's our insights. What I call heart. It really does know some things. 
us, as in everything. It alerts you about them too. If you're not sensing that, it can only be, seems to me, that you're too firmly placed in the head. That's why our openness to this whole process is not optional, it's crucial. Without that openness, mind will just continue to run the whole show. Like it or not, people in just don't tend to take responsibility for the fact that they are in charge of that. They just don't exercise free will and choice. Instead, we're all programmed to play the victim, pointing fingers of blame anywhere but at the self. Well, I guess that's enough. It's never meant to be overwhelming. Heaven knows, life manages that on its own, as long as we're mind-centric, that is. Once we finally let that go, begin to just let it drop away, and it will, things lighten up a great deal, as in a whole lot. As always, have some fun with it. This, too, is a choice. It's called attitude. No one says you have to go through life always grim. I don't care what your sun sign is either. There is simply no finger of blame that we can point at anything that will achieve my respect. It's all nonsense. Now true, we believed it. So we've elevated a lot of knowledge almost to a place of worship. But so what? Does that make it real? Mm, in the short run, maybe, but I think not. My challenge to everyone is to have another look. No matter what it is, have another close look. Let's all slow the heck down. Getting out of the rat race is doable. It's a choice. It won't always be easy. Waking up has some of the highest highs and also the lowest lows. But that's all part of coming back into balance. And when I say getting out of the rat race, I mean not letting it own you anymore. You can be stuck in traffic and happy as a lark, or stuck in traffic and in road rage. And it's no one's fault. It's just choices that you're making. I predict that soon, many, many more people will realize that they are not people at all. They are consciousness. They are spirit source. Once we all begin the trek to taking our own power back, things will seriously begin to change, and, and I'm seeing that change now. It won't all happen at once or on any particular date, but happen it will. So, come along with me. Let the date select itself, huh? Let that stuff go. It's none of your business anyway. It never was. That was just a part of the game that we've grown out of now. Let's say we're on the top level of 3D chess. And we're about to take it to yet the next level. It's just that we've been so thoroughly lied to about how to do this even about the existence of this. Now we've been good sports. We've been following everything we thought was supposed to at least take us close. Well, the way you transcend something generally includes leaving it behind. You let it go. You transmute the sucker. You move on. It doesn't matter that you're headed into a room up ahead that seems pitch black 
and you have no idea how you're supposed to see in there. That, things like that, just don't matter. You just stay tuned to heart and let it lead the way. That is a sure winning strategy. And you have more fun. Cut yourself loads of slack along the way while you're at it. We've had this left brain stuff pounded into us since before we could walk. If you were turning out to be left-handed, oh my God, that's a right brain thing and it's just not allowed. Yeah, right. Well, that's been our history, friends. We were that closely policed by this society decades and decades ago. Don't think they were innocent back in the 50s. It's time to remake it now in our heart's image. No more the head will rule. That's not wrong. It's just way too yang, too male. It's got no balance without a hefty dose of the female, the yin energy that has been so missing. Time to supply it now. No matter what form your current body-mind avatar takes. We're all whole and complete. We are not parts or pieces of things. We are one. We, each one, are both male and female, both woman and man. We contain them both. Our bodies produce both testosterone and estrogen, all of them. Do the research if this is new to you. Take your power back. All of it. Don't believe me just because I say it. Do two things. Go within to prove it to yourself and those few things I offer that can be researched on the net, do that too. Only even as you do the research, stick with heart. Don't forget, heart can think. Even the organ, the physical heart, can think. It's the one producing neurotransmitters, not the mystical one, the, the seeming portal I capitalize and call heart. Own your life. It's up to you to take it back. And there's no need to be in a rush with this either. Just determine it will be so step back and watch it happen. The real you is that powerful. If you really are this tremendously powerful light being I keep telling you that you are, then this must be the way of it. You supply the determination, the serious intent, and watch life come along and do the rest for you. For what may seem crazy now, you'll thank me later. Be willing to make the head to heart shift, my friends. We came in here to do this, to prove that we could forget simply everything on entering into 3D, yet gain it all back in one simple lifetime. This one. Oh, I wrote one simple lifetimes. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. But I went back and corrected it three times in a row, and the same seeming typo persisted. It points to one of the hugest things we've got to unplug from, and that's everything, simply everything around our current conceptions of time. They are all incorrect. 100%. We're living all of those lifetimes now. We know nothing about time, simply nothing. Nor will we until we rise up in consciousness, accessing our built-in multidimensionality so we can view it from above. It's nothing you need to study. You'll get direct experience of this stuff and you'll just know. One sure sign you're firmly planted in now is seeing things from multiple perspectives all at the same time. 
just like we're living all of our embodiments, all of our lifetimes right now. There literally is no past or future the way we think about it. It's a construct, an idea, nothing more. Now, it was useful for a long while. We had fun with it. Not so much anymore. Time to let that go. So be open. Relax. Have fun. Find your way into the now, into heart, into your internal kingdom. You'll find that you reign there. You already do. No waiting required. Upgrading to it, yes. But that's just adapting to what already is. The reality is also that you're whole and complete and divine right this nanosecond. Are you open to new ways to uncover this, to contain it? If you are, then you will. It's really that simple. Be prepared to be impressed with yourself.